Yeah. Uh, One thing before we move on, I, just, I think it's very interesting to see Palantir's go-to-market strategy is exactly what we've been saying for the last year and a half to two years. If you think about it, when we first started talking about this, remember we were like, oh man, I wish they would partner with more SIs. They partnered with SIs. Hey, I think they should do more cons, you know, like where they go and actually do physical presentations. They did it. I think we should get more people like their, their vendors, like who they work with partners already to show off their product because it's not you saying your product is great. It's better if your, um, your partners say your product, they did that. I mean, everything that we talked about and especially Coach they Trapper listen to the Boston, podcast. Carp listens every Friday. Bro. <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey, Alex. Hey, hey, Yo, hey, hold on, hold on. I can, Tom, I can Carp, I'm ready to come on board, baby. Bring me on. <laughs> Bro, out of the 216 people here, I'm gonna make a bunch of people smile that are watching probably in New York City. There's a ton, a ton of Palantir employees that never comment in the chat. Yeah. And they're here and they're watching. And I know this. And don't ask me how I know this, but I know this. They're watching. And a lot they of UDOC know employees they as well. Yeah, a lot what of UDOC can... employees that, that watch. A lot them. of UDOC employees as well. Correct. Hey, keep up the great work, people. Keep up the great yeah, work. Keep it going, man. And uh, you know what? Let let Alex Carp. No, I don't hate him. I just, you know, I, I I'm gonna I'm like you just want I'm the like, CEO to resign. You just yeah. want him to not be the CEO anymore. That's all I mean. I would say. Me, do you still okay? Is, do you okay? So let's, yeah, let's, you should eat those words, Chris. Before Six we get months to ago, CEO shares, ago. Um, before we get to kind CEO of, shares, kind they have some great comments from our viewership. Persian Prince made a comment: Palantir will still have to provide oversight and delivery insurance, even if Deloitte, Accenture, etc., are leading the invitation. Brilliant comment, mm -hmm. very true. When you have SIs, when you have it, you always have to have that reassurance that the actual company who created the product will have your back. You will have options of direct support because there can be uh, conflict and issues and deals where Palantir is not giving that support. Then all of a sudden you're not getting that full white glove treatment and you're running into issues and they're just saying, well, it's Palantir's fault. Right. So great comment there. Another one that was really interesting was someone said, uh, if we miss an earnings, we're going back down to 10. And then there was some debate back and forth. Uh, and then, um, the person said, uh, the other person said, Michael said, I care about forecasting inc increase in customer count. I totally agree. I care about, about uh, the, the, the revenue obligations as well as the customer count. Um, and I love the final comment. Palantir keeps expanding every single quarter in a hundred different ways. Totally agree. Like they are just killing it in different unique ways. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Q. No, we'll talk about Q2 earnings expectations as well because customer count versus revenue is important. But about six months ago, Chris, you basically said, we got to get Carp out of here. We needed a better operator. Do you still mm -hmm. feel the same or do you think he's done enough to think, no, he should continue to maintain the CEO? No, I think I think I still agree. You should be moved out as CEO. He could be the chairman of the board, which I think he would serve as in a much better capacity and let someone who's a bigger, who's better at software sales to take on that role. Right. I mean, it's hard. Like one of the one of the criticisms with Palantir that I've the, I, not just me, but some people have had even internally is that it's almost like a who's who club of people at the hierarchy level where the top is pretty much occupied by original people that have been there for a long time rather than people that are built on meritocracy, right? So meritocracy should be at the forefront of people moving into position of higher, higher, um, damn, I hate my wife when she starts texting me in the middle. Hey, sweetie, we can talk about this later. <laughs> hey. Um, uh, so the thing is, in terms of meritocracy, because of the way that their, their, their company is structured, a lot of the comments that I've seen, especially negative comments, is there's no upward mobility for people at the lower level. So the thing is, like, if you don't give them an opportunity to move up, and it's just literally like a boys club at the top of people that have been there for the last, last 10 years, you know, it's it's not a way that you want to do business. But, um, but Palantir is good. Palantir is... is making all the changes that they need in order to succeed. Um, I'm sure that Alex Karp is actually listening to us. Um, he's listening to everything that's happening here. But he more all, his demeanor. He is less but, erratic when he's talking and stuff. But, but I think it's more, more because he realizes that now as a public company, you cannot just have do it my way or the highway anymore. You know, you are beholden to the shareholders at this point. Maybe not fully because you have your founder shares, but I'm sure that he doesn't like seeing his stock get fucking absolutely demolished in the in the market. So when the market votes saying, hey, your growth rate is slowing down because you're not taking the optimal steps in order to grow your business, 
you have to take that seriously. When you're a private company, you can just you could just, you know, hobble on. It's not an issue. Now you got to show gap profitability. You got to show growth. You got to show that you're taking on all the all the things that a traditional software company does in order to grow the business. So I think it's I think the market has actually taught him more than us. Like, I don't think he turns into this into us and says, you know what? Chris Patel is absolutely right. I need to split Gotham and I don't, I don't think I don't think so. <laughs> To, I agree. I mean, he's he's bent the knee a little bit, but I wouldn't say he's on the ground, right? I wouldn't say the knee is on the ground because if if he was truly that way, he would have had a much more, I guess, col um, conclusive AI strategy rather than just being like, we're just going to take up as much market share as possible. We don't have a pricing strategy, right? That just that, that did not that did not show up well. Strategy. You guys may laugh at me, but I think it's brilliant. I do too. Does anyone do want to debate that? Because it's I brilliant. don't want to debate it at all. Me and Amit <laughs> talked about it very extensively. I think the best way, you're now a profitable company, right? The best way to get it into the hands of people is to provide it to them for free and, and provide that extra step. Uh, and and then turn on the spigot once that they're can you know using you and you have a 50, 60 percent market share. Uh, that that's the best way. And I think that all honesty, that's kind of what their go-to market strategy has been. And Matt, Matt, just not to interrupt yeah. you, but no, no, isn't good, that good. some isn't that something that we've been goddamn saying on this pod for the last two years? Also, start giving your shit away for free. Let people actually use it, so that this way That's they can they get experience doing. with it. That's what I'm saying. But they're two but, years late. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I yes and no, Chris. I, yeah. I you're talking about to the like very small minded consumer, not small minded. That's not the right word. You're talking about to the very individual consumer. I think where it, it differs between what Palantir is doing versus what Snowflake is doing is that where a lot of things lies, you need a massive problem to solve for Palantir to truly be organizing themselves with you and partnering with you. And I do anticipate that they provide this a lot more free. I mean, they've been doing it the last year in Ukraine. I'm sure they've done it before with the pandemic and the vaccine rollout. And it was only until the CDC started renewing contracts that they would start charging, right? Um, but anyway, I, I think that that's been more of a, a freemium version than you anticipate uh, been going on. And I think it's just because Palantir isn't 100%. Just like I'm sure there's plenty of people that get free stuff at a lot of companies that isn't necessarily highlighted. I think it's just because there's so much focus on Palantir and their contracts. And there's such a, a retail investor niche that they think that everything's public. It's like, well, why would they give everything for public, right? It's hmm. anyway, I... I'm more optimistic, glass half full about the go-to-market strategy than than probably a lot of people are. 